I could, uh, I could build a, I could build a, I could build a, I could build a spaceship. Hello and welcome to Space Doctory Minisode whatever. I have no idea anymore. I've lost all count. Um, I'm Lee. I'm Peter. I'm Andy. And this week, uh, we with the um, advent of not one, but two um, interesting trailers, we thought we'd have a little mini-sode discussing um, Star Trek Discovery, which has now actually released some footage of all things. I know! <laughs> I know, when we didn't actually think anything would appear. And then, it, it, it's, it's, it's typical. We waited for months and months and months and months and months for this thing to show us something, and then we got a trailer. Yeah. And then on top of that, we got um, we also got a trailer for Seth MacFarlane of Family Guys, um, comedy sci-fi Trek inspired thing called The Orville, which in contrast we knew absolutely nothing about. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> came, we weren't expecting at all. No, exactly. Came out of left field, didn't know anything about it, and it seems to have left just... field at warp bloody speed. It's like yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, which one do we want to talk about first? Should we get Discovery out of the way or the Orville? Let's do Discovery first, since you know, we, we've mentioned it a couple of times on the cast. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Well, in which case, in which case, round table. Let's do let's do a first impressions, and and seeing as Pete is usually the most, shall we say, purist in terms of <laughs> in terms of, in terms of Trek and all things Trek. Perhaps maybe we should ha- we should let him let him go first. How do you? Yes, how do the you... pulpit is yours, sir. The pulpit uh, is yours, okay. sir. So, what do you think <laughs> of Discovery? I mean, there was two trailers. There was the Netflix one, and then there was the streamable CBS one. Yeah, well, the Netflix one was just kind of like some edited highlight to that, wasn't mm. it? Really? Yes, it pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what did you think of it? Um, I'm trying not to get distracted by the the, the non essentials, um, mm. which, which which is the look of this thing. And particularly the look of the Klingons <laughs> with their wicker outfits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oi, oi, oi. And, and I, I mean, it, oh, it, the, but your problem is that a, a trailer doesn't tell you anything much about the characters and it certainly doesn't tell you anything about what the stories are going to be like. It literally just gives you the non-essential look of the thing. Hmm. So that's all you're left to judge it with, which isn't impressing me at the moment. <laughs> okay. It's, Mainly because it it clearly doesn't fit the time period it's supposed to be in, and and arguably, of course, it can't unless it starts looking very cheap. Yeah. But that's the problem they've got, and that's why one of the reasons why Enterprise failed. But the main reason actually Enterprise failed for me was it didn't have the stories and it didn't have the characters. So if this has got good stories and good characters, I shall probably overcome my my problems with the non essentials and and get into it. But hmm. I'm not going to know until it starts. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair enough. And 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 I mean we do get a small glimpse of what we presume is the discovery. Yes, they um it's interestingly not shot it's the other ship. It's, Sorry, it's um I can't remember what it's called, but it's got a Chinese sounding name. Okay, well, fair enough. Well, uh, we get to see our first yes, Federation post enterprise ship. Then let's put it let's put it that way. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it, it definitely file under glimpse. They clearly aren't showing us very much of it yet in terms of the externals. There, we get to see more of the internals, interestingly, but mm. but we do get to see what now seems to be coming the um, the now standard thing for all modern Trek, which is your ship must come out of a cloud or some kind of mass and be revealed in a ta da kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, did, I mean, did you have any pr- impressions of it? Because I mean, I couldn't tell which way up it was supposed to be. Because no, uh, somebody was saying the parent, the bridge is on the bottom. Mm. Um, yes. So <laughs> interesting. Certainly very different to what Trek's done in the past. But again, the fact that we can't even be completely sure which ship it's supposed to be tells you a lot, really, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for for what it's worth, um, not that that time of recording last week's Commode and Mayo, um, was it P- film podcast, um, had had them getting a text, had them getting both getting a text from Jason Isaacs, who is going to be the captain of the Discovery, I believe, mm-hmm. and so he's only just started filming, so <laughs> <laughs> we might not see the Discovery itself for quite some time, I suspect. I think I think we take it as well that everything in the trailer is from the pilot. Mm, I think that's safe to say. 
So, um, okay then. Well, let's. I mean, I mean. So, so overall, you 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 have what sort of reservations? You have no idea. You just. I have no idea. Is the bottom line because the, the, the important stuff I can't tell from a trailer. So I'm I'm doing my best not to prejudge it on on just the look, which mm. I don't like. But the look isn't that important. Okay, <laughs> that's what I keep telling myself. Fair enough. Okay, then. Well, for the moment, let's let's just hold that there, um, and then move over to you, Andy. What did you think of it? Uh, well, firstly, I found out the name of the ship. It's the USS uh, Shenzhou. Shenzhou. So there we go. Yeah, the Shenzhou. Okay. Um, just on the strength of the trailer its own. Um, on the one hand, it set my mind at ease as far as the CG goes. Just still, I'm, I'm assuming this is still not finished, but it looked a hell of a lot better than that finger quote first glimpse of a discovery we saw was mm. that last year yeah i think so wasn't uh, yeah. It? yeah almost 18 um, months ago now yeah uh which was which was pretty piss poor uh so that was nice um it feels very jj but as someone pointed out to me it was it was inevitably going to feel that way and and f- okay so my understanding of the reason why they've said it's set in the prime universe is CBS owns the rights to the Prime Universe, yep. but Paramount owns the rights to the JJ-verse. Um, because while they used to be part of the same company, they're now separate companies, and they're sharing custody of Star Trek. So although it says it's set in the Prime Universe, they don't care about the Prime Universe. So they're just making it their own little thing. And I can kind of understand why, because if you think about it, the first JJ film came out nearly 10 years ago now, 8 years ago? 2009. It's 2009. So you've got a whole load of people who grew up. That is the Star Trek they know. And I, 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 as Pete said, you know, if you if you reverted it back to the style of the original series, you know, everyone's just going to complain that oh, it looks terrible. Yeah. And if you reset it to the shooting style they had through uh, Next Generation, through to Enterprise, I mean, that's very dated. You know, Battlestar Galactica kind of rewrote the book on how you film science fiction. Um, I'm not a massive fan of some of the weird Dutch angles we were getting throughout. Just made me feel a bit seasick. Um, not massively sold on the uniforms either. Um, I mean, it, it all looks like they've spent money on it, but that's kind of as far as I can say. As Pete says, we've got no real sense of what the characters of the story are going to be like. And all the stories we've heard in the background about CBS's interference and Brian Fuller getting fired, resigning, whatever, everything, just make me go, I could almost have done with just a little bit more of a solid scene, a solid story scene, if you will, Mm. rather than a sizzle reel, which is more what this was. I I mean, for what it's worth, it all looks very pretty. Mm. Doesn't really tell us anything else. Um, Creature effects. I mean, we've got got Doug Jones as... um, uh, Death sniffing alien. Um, yeah, that's a superpower you want, isn't it? Which, which uh, this this sounds terrible, but it's just a another Doug Jones alien, really. You know, it's just mm. I've kind of reached the point of Doug Jones, almost like Andy Griffith when he's doing motion capture. You, you could Andy Griffith see him, not Andy Griffith. Andy, Circus. <laughs> Andy Griffith. Although Andy Griffith as Gollum is something I don't think anyone wants to see. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of you know. You, you just see it and you just you instantly know. I'm not seeing the creature or the, the alien in that trailer. I'm seeing Doug Jones. You know, mm. I'm not saying that's a criticism. I'm not saying it's a positive. I'm just saying that's that's what I saw. Um, I mean, there's a couple of scene, a couple of just shots in the trailer. Uh, there's, there's there's one officer who's got like some weird kind of like reverse visor on. You know, he's got something over his ears, mm. and it just it, it honestly just reminded me of a shot out of Galaxy Quest. You know, it just looked like, oh, it's, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, oh, well, we'll get to Galaxy Quest in a bit, I think. We'll, we'll get to that shortly, yeah. yeah. But, um, <laughs> that was kind of it. I, I mean, mm. I, I'm cautiously optimistic in that I like some of the bits. I, I don't have a problem that it looks more advanced than the original series. In fact, if you listen to the broadcast, which has just gone, I actually lay out an entire theory as to why these prequel shows look better than the original series. Um, so I'm fine with it. I can recall that in my own mind. But I can understand why it would be really distracting for people who are just like, mm. why, why are you... Why, if, if you don't want to revert to primitive technology, stop doing prequels. Because exactly. there's, still plenty of, there's still plenty of stories to tell after Voyager. Yeah. I mean, God, if nothing else, let's just have a series fixing the mess Voyager made. <laughs> mm. 
And, and likewise, why, why recreate the Klingons again? I really can't get my head around that one. Oh. I mean, I can understand why they're not going with the original series look, because let's face it, it's a tad racist. Um, <laughs> just swarthy people. Mm, they're yeah. the bad guys. Mexicans in space. No, well, that's... I, I, will say, I will say this about the Klingons. And, and bear with me here. We, whenever we've seen Klingons, we've always seen the Klingon, which is, you know, he's got the the metallic kind of uniform, the big furry arms and stuff like this. They've all got the same basic haircut, the same basic beards. They're just kind of a, blah, there's your Klingon. Why can't there be some genetic diversity? Maybe this is a different offshoot of Klingons or something like Could this. Be. Um, Could be. I don't actually have a problem with that as such, as, again, as long as at some point they kind of reference it. But that was one thing, I mean, this has been throughout all of Star Trek and most of science fiction. You know, there's so much genetic diversity within humanity that when you get to the aliens, there's not. There's just, there's the warrior ones and then there's the logical ones and then there's the greedy ones and then there's the sneaky ones. That They're just a and other archetype. So if it was proved that these were just a different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's not a different race, but a different... Diverse? A different what, sorry? Diverse? Uh, yeah, just a diverse, you know, um, just a different sect of Klingons or something like that. I'm fine with that, as mm-hmm. long as it's kind of explained as such. Not just as Pete says, they just, these are Klingons now. Mm. Yep. <laughs> we're, not, we're not explaining anything, these are just Klingons now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean that's that's something that has bugged me since since my complete sort of souring on the whole of, you know, on the whole souring of, of, of Star Trek in general is this whole thing of you've got a whole planet and everyone was from the same island on the same surface, eating the same food with the same teacher in the same yeah. school. I mean, it's just like and the Doug Jones alien. I, we have all been designed to sniff for death. It's like, really, that's it. That's your that's your entire planet. Your entire planet just grew up going, you're going to die. So are you. Oh, you're going to die too. We're brilliant. What kind They're of... really popular at parties, those guys. Yeah, exactly. I'm not dead yet. He will be in a minute. <laughs> he will I be. I want to go on the cart. Stop I, being a baby. I can smell death now. I mean, it's just like, that is the kind of really naff bit of science fiction that Trek just seems to be unable to shake ever. It's like, uh, you know, hold on, can't we have sunburn aliens and uh, you know, and aliens which are the, on, from the same planet but live further north and so are a little bit more podgy and a little bit paler or, you know, aliens which are, you know, some which are really clever, some which are really dumb, some which are more tool users and the others which are more intellectuals. It, it just... Star Trek always does this thing of when they do have to diversify a, a race, they do this thing of going... We are part of the intellectual cast. It's like, mm. what? You mean there's an entire club of intellectuals that just sit over here on your entire planet? And that sn- death-sniffing alien was that all over again. As far as the Klingons are concerned, they've been changed so many times. I just, I don't, I didn't get the ass with that at all. Um, I didn't have a problem with that because. As you, as you say, Pete, one minute they're swarthy Mexican, you know, vaguely, you know, basically racist, you know, Mexican Mongol horde sort of allegories, and then five minutes later they're they're sort of like monstrous Cornish pasty head mullet chopped monsters. And to be fair, I mean, basically that's the big jump from the original series to the motion picture, and, and I mean, I wasn't really sort of aware of it at the time, but apparently it was a big outcry there yeah. back then, because yeah, these aren't Klingons, they look nothing like Klingons, which you can kind of understand. But on the other hand, you can completely understand why they made the change as well. So yeah, but then, fine. If you, but then if you look... But, if but you... Then, then from then on inwards, it's basically sort of a gradual modification. They don't change an awful lot. If you look at a Klingon in the motion picture and you look at a Klingon, yeah, a look at War, for instance, in, in Deep Space Nine, there's not a huge difference to be honest it's obviously just a gradual tweaks on the makeup as they went along whereas this is very different i mean it it owes more to the ones in uh, jj verse which doesn't make any sense for legal reasons apparently (laughs) yeah but uh, but i mean to me to me the stuff that they do the stuff they've done to them apart from the really broad noses which they seem to have suddenly gained out of nowhere 
But the the idea of a ridges on the head and all that kind of stuff, I just. I think I think it's more the, it um, the aesthetics as opposed to the the makeup mm. that is is distracting a lot of people because mm. that is something we've really not seen in any of the other ones. Um, yeah, in any of other ones. But again, it comes back to what I was saying before. I, I, I don't personally have a problem with it because why do they all have to shop at the same Primark? Yeah, but um, anyway, I mean, any anything else, sir, or, or just because I've Oh, Ooh, me? Mm. Um, yeah. No, no, not especially. Um, like I said, um, I'm cautiously optimistic. I I feel that the effects presented in the trailer aren't going to be finished because obviously this is still mm. up to potentially six. Well, no, four months away from air. It's meant At to come least. out to fall sometime. I think. So yeah, there's still time. I mean, they'll they'll probably still be working on the effects up until the week before it airs. <laughs> Um, so, so I expect, you know, various effect shots to be finished and done up. Um, lens flares a little bit too on the nose. Um, there was one shot in the trailer which I quite like. It's it's quite a way in, but you see them walking through the desert. But you see a long shot, and there's like a ringed planet in the background, and a moon, and another planet, and that really reminds me of the old map paintings you used to get in the original series. So I quite like that. Yeah, I like the, the the desert stuff. Is the best, definitely the best mm. stuff because you you get a little bit of an insight into you know these are clearly interesting characters. I want to learn more about. Plus, they're equipped quite obviously with a a flip top communicator and a tricorder that looks pretty much in keeping. So that was the best bit, really. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm who are we kidding? I'm going to be tuning into this as soon as it comes mm. out, um, and. I dare say we'll do more mini sodas as more information and stuff comes out from it. Um, but at the same time, it didn't kind of excite me in the same way that the Orville trailer, which we'll get to in a bit, did. You know, it didn't really kind of grab me and say, oh, my God, I want to see this. Hmm. OK, I mean, for me, I I watched it. I just thought, yep, yeah, it's a trick trailer. It is what it is. It, it didn't. I, I, I will be honest with you. I didn't. I didn't feel like uh, how can I put it? I didn't feel like I, I felt like if someone hadn't told me it was Star Trek and ha- it, until that very last logo bit, I would not have known that was Star Trek. Um, which is, I suppose, in some ways, is a positive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I literally I was watching it and I'm thinking, yeah, this is just a another spaceship movie. Hooray! Uh, spaceship TV series, <laughs> huzzah! And then you know, with a good cast, and then all of a sudden, up turn the Vulcans, and that we've gone back to the sort of Enterprise, JJ verse Vulcans, who seem to just be the biggest assholes in the universe. Um, from from the from from the sort of original Trek kind of oh, the benevolent super duper aliens to now they all they do is stand there and go. You shop at Morrison's, don't you? You know, I mean, <laughs> that's essentially what they do. You know, you are not very really good, and they've got this kind of weird arrogance now, which is entirely puts me off them because it's just like, hold on, we're supposed to we're supposed to think these guys are like, you know, they're they're super cool, and it's like, okay, and now we're just thinking they're a bunch of dicks, and. Mm. Yeah, so for me it was just like I don't know. I I just I watched it and I thought, hmm, okay, that's a thing. And I I I, I watched the I watched the I watched the um, Netflix trailer first, and as I was watching it, I was kind of like, I'm I'm not inspired by this at all. There's nothing going on in here which makes me go, oh, I must see this. And then I watched the the other trailer. The CBS uh, the one. The CBS one. And I thought, yeah, that's a bit more like it. That's a bit cooler. That's a bit more fun. But pff, still came away from me going, pff, whatever. It's It's got, you know, I, I, you tell me it's Star Trek, I'll go, yep, that's fine. It's Star Trek. Wicked. And then, yeah, I watched it and that was it. And I was fine with it. And jobs jobs are good. And, but then when you suddenly go... um you know, then when I turn the sound on, and it's like all the usual Trek stuff comes out, and it's like, "Yep, I'm an alien that only has one trait. 
I'm a Klingon. I'm going to be angry. I'm a... <laughs> yeah, uh, we we are all Star Trek Federation people. We're all super perfect. I, w- I will I will mm. say this though, just about the Klingons we see, mm. and again, this is purely supposition from what we see in the trailer. But it seems to be some sort of a religious gathering or a ceremony because there's a sarcophagus or something they're kind of opening. Mm. I mean, when you think of Klingons, you think, like you said, drunkards, angry, sharp, pointy things, citronella candles, red lights. Mm. There's no citronella candles or red lights there, and they're all kind of. If if anything, like you said, if if you were to tell me this wasn't a Star Trek movie, I'd think this was a scene from Stargate, and we're about to get a gourd or something come out of the thing. Mm. That was kind of a vibe I got from mm. there, and that is int- again, it's a different possible aspect to cling yeah. on to what have you that we haven't seen before. Well, you know, like I said, I'm I'm not I'm not trying to diss it. I'm just trying to say at the moment what I've got is effectively. I've just looked at it and I've just gone, yep, it is what it is. It's a thing. Um, And it's got spaceships in it and it's got some people in it. And, and, a, and a, yeah, that's, that's about all I've got. Unfortunately, <laughs> I, I really, I really, you know, I wish I did. I wish I actually had some stronger, stronger feeling about it, but actually I don't. And I think that might, I I don't see that as negative, but I don't see it as a positive either. I'm I'm just well. I was going to say, g- given your mm. renowned love of Trek, uh, at least the more mm. recent Trek, shall we say, mm. not instantly wanting to claw your eyes out is a win. I think yeah. it's progress. Yeah, well, <laughs> yes. exactly, exactly. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I just at the moment, I'm just whatever. It's whatever I see. It's fine. Just, but you're going to watch it, I guess. Yeah, I'll watch it. But am I rushing to watch it? Am I going to race to see it? I don't know. Probably. I'll probably see it when it comes out because I'll be interested and intrigued to see what they've done with it. Mm. But if I if I don't see it until a couple of weeks after you guys, I'm not going to be going, oh, shit, I've wait- oh, ah, I should have watched it. And, it and, you know, <laughs> and you know the other thing is it's going to be, everyone's going to be hot takes on this. Everyone's going to be waiting to either do one of two things. They're either going to be waiting to give it an absolute kick in or tell you that it's it's the return to Trek that we all wanted. And, you know, it's either going to be a rallying cry or a big, you know, kickathon. And it's like, well, I'm not I'm not really that invested in it enough already to to want to get into that scrum. <laughs> Does that mean you know what I mean? It's like I'm gonna wait and see what other people say and go, yeah, okay, see what happens, and take it from there. But if it turns out to be shit, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be crying my eyes out, and also I'm not gonna be sitting again. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> I'm so I'm so nonplussed by it. It's really odd. I really wish I could actually fire up more enthusiasm for it, any way, shape, or form, but I just can't. Just can't. No, fair enough. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I will say this again, just from the, the mm. trailer alone. It, it's every line out of this thing is exposition. Well, that but that's trek all over. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, you, know, you, you I watched that. I watched that last for the last episode we did. I watched that stupid Ugh. bloody yeah, episode. Well, that was, uh... Yeah, but yeah, mean, yes, but but I'd ask you not to judge all of Trek by um, Voyager, one of the more mediocre episodes of Voyager. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fair enough. But the point is, you know, it, it still it still managed to hit all the tropes that we saw yeah. in this one. You know, it's like, hello, I am an alien. What kind of alien are you? I am a scientific alien. We are all scientific aliens because I am from the scientific cast, and I am a. I am a scientific alien, and then over here we got, hey, we are the religious aliens. We are religious. <laughs> it's like, right. <laughs> your whole planet is just two two halves <laughs> that's it like yeah been here done that seen that just i'm just flicking through. i've got i've got a, a load of stills from a trailer here i'm just flicking through they're on ign which um mm. i'll throw into the um to the chat here for you mm-hmm. gentlemen would like to see at least i would if i can remember where the button is there you go right there, there you go. go. There's, there's, there's some stills. Um, crackly, so crackly, just a couple crackle, of things. Crackle, crackle. Crackle. Right, we're back in a sec. Ah, oh, there you go. Let's have a look at the. Let's have a look at these images. These stills he's given us. I mean, the one that comes straight to mind that's worth a look. I think here he comes back. Is is the implication that the first officer 
is somehow related to the Vulcans or yeah. is involved well, there's in the a, Vulcans. There's, there's a picture of her possibly as a child mm. looking, with a Vulcan haircut. <laughs> yeah, while Snidey Vulcan looks Snidey. But that being said, we know that Spock was supposed to be the first half Klingon to serve in Starfleet, wasn't he? Half, half Vulcan, yeah. Half Vulcan, so yes. Um, and this is supposed to be Sarek, Spock's dad as well. Ah, oh, yes, I forgot about that. Because um, I noticed there appears to be some sort of an android. Yep. Um, attached to the USS Shenzhou, reading from the thing on the side. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't think the Shenzhou's long for this world. Probably not. <laughs> I suspect, given that Michelle Yeoh's now probably got a lot of work on from, from Marvel, um, <laughs> she I, sus- I suspect she's going to go. To, to be fair, Marvel are running such a big backlog, she probably won't start shooting until 2025. Hmm. <laughs> but I, sus- I, suspect, I suspect that the Shenzhou's got about a week, and then it's all yeah. gonna, got one week, and then it's going to be trashed. By the Vulcans, um, there's a um, there's a weird, I don't want to say Star Wars looking Not alien, Vulcans, but Klingon, I'm going to say Star Wars looking alien, <laughs> yeah, with a um, with some sort of a a hood, which mm-hmm. is kind of different. I mean, what you most mean, of a, you mean hmm? the um, you mean someone's cut the face off of the front of a um, Krogan? Yeah, exactly. Krogan's gone straight into a wall. <laughs> exactly at speed <laughs> at speed. <laughs> Wear your seatbelts on Krogan vessels. Um, Absolutely, and you got low. You got black lobot. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, black lobot. I mean, the bridge itself is kind of. It's just. A, it doesn't. F- it, it it feels like a set. Mm. And I know that's it, okay. That but it is obviously a set. It's just for some reason with the shots here, it just kind of feels like a set. Also, lens flares are back in a big way. <laughs> yep. I don't have a huge problem with lens flares. I mean, again, say what you will about the the 09 film. If you flick a few of the channels and you accidentally flick on it, you're going to know you're watching Star Trek. Hmm. (laughs) Can I make one suggestion? Among one thing, though. Yes. Yeah. Just on the on the subject of Klingons. All the Klingon stuff, or at least what we presume are the Klingon stuff, is all the set stuff where you see them standing there roaring and, and that, and we're presuming they are Klingons and the only evidence we have to suggest that they are Klingons is the fact that you see a load of Klingon symbols on the mm. pa- on a panel mm-hmm. on the on the shin well that that's what we've, we've already been told the feature the story is supposed to feature Klingons in a big way okay right fine well in which case I'll take that back but what I was going to say because nothing in the trailer actually links the two things you just kind of make an assumption that these guys are Klingons Mm. It's, that's the only thing I was gonna just add, just add that because to me that's the one thing that you know we're kind of making that assumption, but there's no there's nothing in either trailer that kind of actually says that these two this these two scenes are actually interrelated. I I I, I, I think implying the phone the dummy implies a level of competence. I'm not entirely sure CBS is capable of. Okay. Um, although I will say, I mean. It, it, a couple of these shots look like the Klingon stuff might actually be taking place on a ship, which again further links it to the Goa all because you know it's very ornate mm. and um, unlike anything we've seen from the Klingons in other stuff. So, mm. I mean, I mean, I, I'm legitimately curious to see where this goes, what happens with those. Yeah. So, uh, and I just linked you guys over to the poster, which I actually really like. I like the poster. Uh, the poster. Oh yeah. That's the discovery there, isn't it? Yeah, yes. that's the discovery, yeah. Mm. With its triangle hull. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, you know, let's let's see what we can see. I mean, yeah, let's see what it does. I mean, like I say, I, I, I've, I've got so little in, invested in it in terms of actually feeling about it. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> If it's good, it's good, and I'll I'll be pleased for everyone, and I will watch it. But if it's bad, I'm not going to get cross. I'm just going to go. Um, I mean, I think Voyager and Enterprise did for me, and Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine, I kind of dropped out midway. Don't tell me that I missed all the good stuff. I know, but you uh, did the... miss all the good stuff. Yeah, I put up with four years of shit stuff. <laughs> oh. 
that's that's an argument for another day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, so yes, so uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, f- yeah, he, yeah. If, if he's good, it's good, you know. If it's bad, it's bad. Well, I, I, I think the problem <laughs> we have here is we've heard so many rumors mm. and there's been an awful lot of mismanagement of the way information has been presented mm. up until now, but this trailer on its own isn't enough to put all of that aside. Whereas if this trailer had landed at, um, at Comic-Con instead of that shitty discovery reveal, I think everyone would be legitimately excited. Really? Do you think so? I, I, do, I do, because I think if you hadn't... Okay, if the whole Brian Fuller thing hadn't happened, if we hadn't heard about all the CBS interference, we hadn't heard about the delays it being pushed back three or four times, if this had landed, people would be a lot more excited than, you know, we've had a year of delays and no news and just general mismanagement, and then this happened. This just looks, yeah, it's okay. Mm, okay. What do you think, Pete? Yeah, I was saying I'm I'm trying not my best neither to be disappointed nor crazily excited because you know trailers don't tell you anything really. So hmm. wait and see. As Jim Moon once said, you actually have to try to do a bad trailer these days. Yeah, this is true. Well, okay then, fine. Well then, let, speaking of that, <laughs> speaking of <laughs> trying to make a bad trailer, um, <laughs> let's move on to the next um, reveal. Which was the Seth MacFarlane um, Star Trek parody ripoff, um, and everyone keeps saying Galaxy Quest, and they need to stop because that's not just because it's a comedy, and just because it's set on a Star Trek thing does not make it Galaxy Quest because Galaxy Quest was a different story. But there you go. <sighs> but anyway, there we go with the Orville. So, all right then, let. let the Space Doc Jury Twitter account had a bit of a schizophrenic fit <laughs> about three days ago of time of recording. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, uh, we asked Pete first, so what about you, Andy? You go first on this one. What do you think of this trailer? Well, this came completely out of left field. I, I didn't even know this was in development mm. or anything like that. It was just like... Someone posted... I, I, at first, I thought it was something like a Saturday Night Live sketch. Mm. And then it was like, no, actually, this is a series. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, where the fuck did this come from? Mm. Um, which was kind of cool. Uh, so let, let me just lay out my story with regards to Seth MacFarlane, first of all. Mm. Used to be a huge fan of his work early in the day. Feel like his animated shows have generally had their day. He's a, a bit of a one-trick pony, family guy. I watch it now, and I'm just like... I'm bored. I'm moving on. American Dad still got some traction with it. Mm. Equally with his live action stuff. Ted one, the first Ted, I thought was quite funny. Mm. Second Ted, it's like, well, I've just seen this film. Um, and the less we say about A Million Ways to Die in the West, the better. Mm. Um, although it has the best cameo of all time, but it's a different story. Um, okay. But yeah, the trailer alone, I went in with a heavy dose of scepticism because Seth MacFarlane was so heavily featured in what I could see. Mm. But it legitimately made me laugh. There there was bits in here where I was, you know, legitimately like laughing out loud, if you'll forgive the expression. Mm. Um, And and the fact that, you know, Seth MacFarlane is a renowned Star Trek fan. You know, he he actually appeared in a couple of episodes of Enterprise back in the day. Mm. Take that as an endorsement or or not, if you will, but that was cool. And the fact that a lot of Trek alumni are involved in this. So you've got Jonathan Frakes is already confirmed to direct an episode. Um, John Favreau, again, another well-known Trekkie, is going to direct one. And, uh, no, and all he's that. one and of the series creators, isn't he? Is he the series creator? I, I knew he was directing. I didn't know who was the yeah, creator. Yeah, I thought he was, I thought he was um, heavily involved in the whole thing. I, quite anyway, possibly, yeah. I don't know. Um, I mean, you say you don't want comparisons to Galaxy Quest, and I can get that. It's a different thing. But equally so, we do kind of have to acknowledge is that Galaxy Quest was made with a lot of love for Star Trek. Oh, yeah. No, no, and no. I feel that this is also made with a lot of love for Star Trek. This, I feel like it is going to laugh with the fans. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, when I say I don't, the comparison against Galaxy Quest, it just seems like, it seems to me like it's one of those things where um, it's a it's a lazy shorthand because at the end of the day, the 
Galaxy Quest was about a bunch of actors finding out they were actually in a real Star Trek. And yes. you know and but this is actually a real this is <clears throat> this is like a real trek. Yeah. yeah. This is this is almost trek like show. the show that the actors were in. Mm. Which uh, is fine. Which which I think was the proposed series they kept talking about doing would have been. Mm. Yeah, and that's fine. But the but my point is it's 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 that weird thing where people just go, Oh, it's Galaxy Quest and it feels like a kind of dismissal without really having much else to go on. They just go, Oh, it's a comedy, it's Galaxy Quest. Boom. Mm. Thanks very much and good night. And it's like and then and then you get s- some people just go, Well, it's never gonna be as funny as Galaxy Quest and it's like oh, for God's sakes. You know, well, I remember saying to you when we first saw this, I said, look, it's hmm. either going to go one or two ways. It's going to be Galaxy Quest in terms of quality or um, Hyperdrive. Hmm. And from what I've seen, it's more of a Galaxy Quest end of hmm. the spectrum. Hmm. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, cool. So uh, what about you, Pete? What did you think of it? Yeah, well, <laughs> Seth MacFarlane stuff doesn't make me laugh, with the exception of Ted, which I did quite enjoy, to be honest. Mm. But the you know, family guys always pass me by, and yeah, so I didn't laugh at anything in the trailer. Which, if it's a co- really? supposed to be a comedy, you know, <laughs> not even. Uh, can you move a little, couple of steps to your left? That was really annoying me. No, mm. yeah, the framing. The <laughs> and then that's, I don't that. know whether that's just the writing or Seth MacFarlane's performance. I, but yeah, you know, don't make me laugh. Which you know, yeah, we were saying previously with the discovery one that the, the stuff we're seeing on the trailer is the only important stuff it's the characters and it's the story that's important well obviously with comedy it's it, it's the making you laugh that's important and this isn't <laughs> okay so so what we've got here then is <laughs> what we got here then is is the the usual thing with comedy which is comedy is subjective yup and that, i guess so and that, well it simply is i mean otherwise why is adam sandler still in work I mean, <laughs> oh, 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 I can answer that one. Um, yes, he, he he made a pact with the devil, yeah. and we must suffer for it. Yeah, but the point still stands: is that yes. that whole thing of like, you know, why? Um, so for me, I I I watched this, and my 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 feeling of about Seth MacFarlane is when I watch his stuff, I like it, and I find I I laugh, and sometimes I laugh despite myself, but I do laugh. And this did the same thing. Um, you know, judge me however you feel deem fit. And trust me, people have been doing that online for a while now, so I don't really care. So, but um, it's, yeah, I I watched this and this is something where I just thought, right, okay, you've got enough love for Trek that you want to at least try and stay, sort of put Trek elements in there. But mm-hmm. what you do is see the inherent stupidity of the Trek setup now, or rather, not stupidity, but certainly the. How can I put it? There's the absurdness of some of the situations. Well, yeah, it's the it's the it's the nature of the the of Trek and its genericness and now and it's you know it's a it's it, it compare you know it's my my issue you know that Trek is you know diet coke science fiction now. Uh, hmm. You know, whereas once it led the way with all these inventions and ideas, and sh- you know, full of, you know, you know, ideas of inclusivity and diversity in a future utopian universe, and now it's just like, oh, isn't they quaint? <laughs> um, and this takes that and recognizes it, but doesn't poke fun at, at Trek, but certainly understands that the the where the humor can be brought from it. In, in terms of just like, you know, I, I would honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere along the line they, they do land on a planet and find that it's a race of only one type of, you know, one type of species and he makes a point of it. I mm. mean, he's got he's got a love for Trek and that's very clear. I mean, so, yeah, I don't know. It's just, as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, I watched I watched that, and I was a lot more enthused about that than I was Discovery. I'll be honest oh, with you. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, straight on me too. Um, and also, mm. it was nice, you know. Again, it's practical effects. You know, we've seen there's a filming miniature for the Orville, mm. uh, which is cool. I also quite like the um, the bridge set in so much as it it has a it has well, it's, firstly it's bright, which 
my God, I don't think we've seen a bright Star Trek bridge since <laughs> the next generation, have we? <laughs> no. um, but secondly, it, it, it has it looks cheap while clearly yeah. not being cheap, if mm. that makes sense. You know? It it looks like it's it, it doesn't look overly engineered, which I really like. Yeah, I mean it's quite interesting in terms of I mean, you know, we were just saying five minutes ago, oh you can't do Trek because, you know, between you know, Enterprise and Kirk's era, you know, original series, because it'll look cheap and nasty. And it's like, well, mm. well, actually, <laughs> exhibit yeah. A, Your Honor, you c- you can. <laughs> and... Oh, when we say you can't, we mean the executives view that they can't. Yeah. But yes, I, I take your point. Mm. Uh, and, and well, hell, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking. There's, there's, I'm about a minute ten in, and there's just this wide shot of the bridge there, and and it's clearly supposed. to it's clearly riffing on the um, the next generation bridge oh, right yeah. down at the carpets. Yeah, the Enterprise, <laughs> which, which is awesome. And beige. But then, it's beige and brown. It's beige and brown. And then let me just find if if you got to. It's all right. I've, you, I've, I've, got, this, I've got a picture. Well, so if, you, if you pull up the um, the Discovery one at about fifty one seconds in, and you kind of just put the both the bridges side by side, it's like hmm. the Orville one just feels like a, a more pleasant place to be. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it certainly feels more Trek over. Yeah, well, that, well, yeah, but that's what, that's but that's what I'm saying. It's like that whole thing of you know you can't do you can't do the cheapy '60s Trek and modernize it. It's actually well, actually you blooming well can. It's right there. Yeah. And and if you want to go back to Galaxy Quest, that did it. You know, yeah. I mean, that's that's the one thing. It, it's it's the one thing again that that Trek seems to be getting more and more like, which is that sort of over earnest po faced super seriousness of itself it, it doesn't have its tongue any in its cheek anymore yeah and that's a real shame because it, it if its tongue wasn't like in the cheek it was certainly just hovering next to it mm. and you know with the occasional whereas again, I, I i suppose it probably probably started with voyager because you know deep space nine still had quite a few episodes certainly anything with quark and gauk and all that way it was still there was humor there mm. voyager Whenever they tried to be funny, it always came across to me as condescending, and Enterprise just kind of did away with it altogether. Um, mm. And yeah, it's it's like I, I I think I mean, and it's my, my one criticism about Star Galactica is there really was no joy in anyone there. Well, they they tried a comedy episode and felt it didn't work and never did it again. Didn't yeah, they? Uh, mm. and I just feel that when people do science fiction shows these days, they always look to Galactica as like their jumping off point. In much the same way people used to look to the next generation as their jumping off point. And so it's all very po-faced and serious and gritty and, mm. you know, the stakes are enormous. And it's just like, well, I, I quite like, I mean, I just like the bit when he's running out the corridor, you know, runs through the gelatinous alien. Are we good? Are we good? Yeah, we're good. I like that. Hmm. That's Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I, I, I think it's probably another part of the whole issue. It's, it's that whole thing of... Yeah, you know, Star, Star Trek. Star Trek should be about hope and optimism, and you know all that kind of stuff. And it's like what it seems to be about now is 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 showing everyone how how super important it is, mm. and it's just like disappears up its own ass. It's just like, oh, do me a favor. <laughs> um, but this this kind of obviously this goes completely the other way, and. Yeah. But for some reason, I actually, I actually enjoy it for that. <laughs> I enjoy it for the fact that it's gone, it's gone proper sixties trek. I mean, they land on a fucking planet which has a log cabin and a guy with a shotgun. Yeah, yeah, and it looks like it looks like a set from a Wild West TV show, which is you know clearly what it's all about. And they get shot at by the chief by from <laughs> um from Star Galactica of all things. Well, yeah. And, and and that's the, another thing, you know, it looks like there's going to be a lot of, you know, not only Trek, but just sci-fi alumni who want to be involved in this, you know, mm. who, who want to have fun. So, mm. I mean, yeah, straight up, I'm I'm more excited about the Orville than I am about Star Trek Discovery. Yeah. I will watch both. But which one, just based purely on the trailers and away from everything else we've seen, which one do I think will be more entertaining for me to watch? It's going to be the Orville. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, the Orville could, but the thing, you know, just to play devil's advocate, the Orville is on Fox Network, so it might not last, oh, it's not more, last than six, one more than a season. Yeah, it lasts six episodes, and that'll be the end of it. Yeah. But um, they'll film ten, they'll air six, and then you know it'll be DVD for the rest of the life. <laughs> yeah, and then there'll be then there'll be a whole heap of people who keep insisting it's coming back. Um, you yeah. might get a film in a few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one will watch. Um, right. So, what about you, Pete? What's your kind of? I mean, I know you're not really finding it funny, but what you got anything else to add to that, sir? You got anything you want to add? Uh, I don't think so. No, I mean, I'm not particularly looking forward to it but then again i don't find seth mcfarlane funny so why would i <laughs> fair enough fair enough and what what about the orville itself come on let's get this out in the oh, air yeah really on. you like that i do i think it's i tell loopy you what ship. <laughs> i tell you what loopy butt ship yeah i, I tell you what it, it, to me it's an interesting design and you know, you know what in a world in a world where sources and nacelles with a little blobby bit in the middle and can be as arranged in 75,000 different ways. Something that actually has a different look <laughs> is worth its weight in gold. <laughs> I thought... No, I'm, I'm, I'm with Lee on this. I, I quite like the look of the... Um, it's of the it's different. I, I'm not and, saying and I love enough, it. I mean, and, and I know you both uh, utterly despise everything to do with the Trek books and everything like this. It, it, it's very reminiscent of a, um, a ship they have in the Mirror Universe uh, when the humans kind of come out from... Klingons and Cardassian stuff. So yeah, I, I really like the ship. I think it's cool. Although I, I will take issue with you calling the um the protector uh Sequest DSV with bow legs. Because <laughs> if anything, this looks more like Sequest. You just haven't looked at the Sequest in a while. Well, last time I saw Sequest it looked like a novelty butt plug. Um I mean the th- the thing my point was, you know, you you know, if if you're gonna start comparing something the Orville, for example, to to a to a loopy, to what was it? You called it a loopy version of the Voyager, or something. Yeah, like. the front the front's like the Voyager, and the back ends. Well, looking at it, I've got an interesting pause shot at the moment. It just looks like a pelvis. It's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like a novelty slipper from many angles. It's not a ship that can be filmed from many angles and look good. I'll give you that. <laughs> um, or indeed any. I don't know. I mean, there's a couple of angles I like the look of it. I, I just, uh, to me, like I say, I, I, I will place value on something that looks unique and it looks like someone's put a different spin on things than than anything that I because I guarantee you everything and everything that comes out of discovery and I'm not using this to slam discovery I'm just doing it in general but I guarantee you I could pretty much design it with five seconds of doodling because we can all doodle nacelles and <laughs> nacelles and support arms and secondary hulls and saucers in any number of infinite combinations of course, the great irony being that they went for something different, it being a triangle, and everyone was like, oh, no, no love triangles. Well, that, again, <laughs> my point exactly. <laughs> but no, I, I, I quite like the uh, I quite like the Orville. Um, I, I think it looks interesting. Mm. Yeah, um, I mean, like I say, it's going to live or die on its humour, and, and your mileage will vary with that, obviously. And yeah. that 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 much is very, very clear. And you know, and the same will go, and the same goes for Discovery. Both both are complete unknowns at this point. I can only go by the trailers of both. And for me, I watched the Orville trailer, and I went, I want to watch that. And I watched the Discovery trailer, and I went, Ah, oh, Star Trek's back. I mean, that was essentially it. So <laughs> that's all I can take away from it. <laughs> you know, there's, you know, it's it's like, ah, oh, we're all on the merry way back to Trekland. You know, and and guaranteed everyone complain you know this is my bitterness coming out of here as well but you know i guaranteed everyone's complaining about the uniforms the ship the way the klingons look the way that the fucking the ships fly the everything you can every little nitty picky fucking thing guarantee you by next next convention season come round this time next year half the people going will be in those fucking costumes and the other half will be making the fucking discovery in 3D and telling us all about it with utmost authority and tying tying its infinitely convoluted loop, story loops into the, yes, the canon. Yes, let the hate flow through you. Yeah. It is making powerful. 
However, <laughs> the Orville has got no backstory, no history, no nothing, and it's just going to turn up and go, ta-da, we're doing a space story, done. <laughs> and I bet I bet it ends up being every bit every bit as hated and loathed and poured over for, for six episodes of Discovery. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. I just did to me I I get cross. I get cross. I need <laughs> I've got to stop. got to stop. I'm still getting flashbacks to fucking Voyager. You bastards <laughs> making me watch that. I'm still bitter. I'm still, still getting heartburn. Yeah. Although, in, again, mm. uh, was it uh, Halo Man Bob Lamont uh, would like to uh, make a defense of Voyager, apparently. So uh, that's would something he? we'll have to do at some point. Yes, he would. Well, yeah, that's true. If, if Halo Man Lamont from, from the Black Dog Feedback um, over there would like very much like to... Uh, yeah, defend Voyager. That would be um, an interesting one. I mean, there's a lot to say say about Voyager. Not sure any of it. That'll be said. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll be said. But, you know, I think we've kind of almost said it already, you know, in this, <laughs> in this episode. <laughs> but anyway. So, so, so what we're basically saying, though, it looks like the second half of the year is going to be a bit of a boon for science fiction on TV. Mm. And, yeah. in, and in Shows the... with spaceships are back. Exactly. Yes. exactly. Uh, I don't think Expanse Season 3 will be kicking off until next year, which is a shame, but still, there's some good shit out there. Yes, and, yeah, well, and this, it, well, The Expanse Season 2 is now appearing on Netflix UK, so... Is it? Ooh. Yes. Oh, excellent. So, there you go. They they threw up a, threw up a trailer. So that's well, yes. Uh, as, as, as soon as you two are up to speed, we shall have to mini sewed that. Yes, mm-hmm. for sure. So um, there you go. So what do you think? What do you guys think? What do you think about the Orville? Do you like Seth MacFarlane? Do you hate him? Do you th- want to watch this regardless? Um, what about Discovery? What are you thinking? You know. And so you know, let us know. Let us know in the comments on on the Space Doc Jury website, spacedocjury.com. Do you let us know in the Facebook group, you know, facebook.com slash group slash Space Doc Jury. Or just call us all a bunch of idiots on Twitter, which is twitter.com slash Space Doc Jury. Um, and that's that. So um, before we go, uh, gentlemen, do you want to plug your wares while we're at it? Uh, Andy? Oh, okay. Uh, you, you can catch me on the Grand Prix podcast with Mr. Elton mm-hmm. and also the Band of Brothers podcast, which are both on rogue2media.com. Mm-hmm. Cool. And uh, Pete? Yeah, you, if you want to hear me talking about more Star Trek, then uh, check out uh, the broadcast on uh, Geek Planet Online or iTunes. And uh, we've just started season five of Deep Space Nine. And uh, yes, I've, I've been watching an episode in preparation for it this evening. Good stuff. Yes. Cool. Glory to you and your cast. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Break out the citronella candles. We have some friends coming round for burgers. <laughs> right then. And you can hear me on the Black Dog Podcast every week. Uh, and we're over at blackdogpodcast.com and all iTunes. And uh, that's about it, really. So, until next time, take care. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you all soon. Take care. Tassie, bye. Cheer, bye. I wish I could fly. <laughs> right up to the sky. <laughs> but you can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> but you can't. I wish I could fly right up to the sky.